Hello guys, hello everyone, this is Mike Padua and good to be back and uh, we are going to give you the very latest on the upcoming Tropical Storm Phone Wong as Tino has already made landfall over Vietnam and this is for today, Friday early morning November 7, 2025 English version, brought to you by Typhoon 2000 and Naga College Foundation and uh, we would also like to thank our partners about this power Bank of the Philippine Island Sustainability. If you're interested, just click on the link here. Or if you're watching via Facebook, there's a link below this video under the description of uh, this uh, Facebook uh, update. And also, uh, the local government of Naga City, headed by our Honorable Mayor Lenny Robedo and our Honorable Vice Mayor Gabby Fordado. Well, my software. Uh, video recording has uh, corrupted during the past 24 hours that's why we are not able to release some updates glad to be back I reinstalled it and it's good to be uh, back just in, just in time with the upcoming large uh, tropical cyclone it's so large it's uh, currently size of the country of the Philippines 1,400 kilometers approximately is the diameter of this uh, large tropical cyclone. So, folks over Luzon down to uh, parts of the Visayas, we must be prepared for the possible uh, uh, occasional rains that uh, this system will bring to our country and uh, powerful winds near the core of this uh, incoming uh, tropical cyclone. And here's now the uh, fast animation from the uh, University of Wisconsin Tropical Cyclone page. And there you go. This is, uh, uh, let me see. Okay. Oh, sorry, sorry. As you can see it here, this is uh, Tropical or Typhoon uh, Tino. Uh, Kalmegi and it has made landfall around 6 to 7 p.m. last night and it's uh, weakening rapidly as it moves toward, towards Laos after making landfall over Vietnam and uh, the, 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 the system has rapidly intensified into uh, category 4 briefly for just 6 hours then late this afternoon it weakened dramatically from uh, 215 down to 205 and upon making landfall it has been downgraded into a category 3, 185 kph. Still a powerful typhoon, okay? But this is now history. We will no longer mention this storm. Our focus and attention will now switch with this very large tropical cyclone, okay? And uh, it will be named O1 as it enters the Philippine Air Responsibility later tonight, Friday evening. And it looks like the whole of Luzon will be under the large circulation of the system. And it will pass approximately 200 kilometers north northeast of Naga City between uh, Sunday afternoon and Sunday evening. So we're going to show to you the uh, blow by blow uh, uh, analysis on this system. Uh, let's begin now with this uh, zoom in satellite animation from Windy Humansat, and this is the the uh, night image as you can see. It's really a scary system, and has been moving currently towards the north northwest slowly, as you can see here as it consolidates. Okay, let me uh, yeah. So that's the system right now, so large and uh, the possible movement of this storm is likely to track towards this direction and it looks like it will pass very close to uh, Pico region and make landfall here so that will be the possible track of the system since it's large and uh, we might be uh, bombarded with uh, 50 to 200 millimeters of rainfall that's the conservative value Let's hope and pray it won't reach 400 millimeters. But the good news, it's moving at a rate of 25 kph towards the west northwest. So we might be uh, going to experience rainfall for just a day. Okay, 
unlike Christine, which lasted for three days because of very slow movement and stationary cloud bands over our region. So this is uh, still going to uh, have some threat of flooding in large area of uh, Luzon and uh, parts of the Visayas because of the large circulation of this system. Now I'm going to show to you now the, the first track that we've created yesterday morning which was released in the afternoon and uh, still there's no changes on the track the same. It will pass very close to the Bicol region. This is the Bicol region. Here is uh, Naga City. Let me see. Okay, so Naga City is here. So uh, if you look at the uh, uh, wind radius of tropical storm force winds, meaning uh, winds of uh, 60 to 100 kilometers per hour will be expected over the whole of the Bicol region okay since it has a very large wind radius of 300 to 400 kilometers uh, from this center as it uh, it is expected to pass over here so the uh, distance from the Bicol region is approximately more or less 200 kilometers and take note of this cone of uncertainty this is very important because the cone of uncertainty is from the north, Batanes, down to uh, Bicol region and Batangas. So that's the cone of uncertainty. So take note of that sudden uh, shift of this system towards the uh, uh, north or south of the track will uh, bring uh, devastating effects. So this is very important to look on the possible uh, uh, tracking of this uh, system okay and uh, let me show you here so uh, the possibility of tracking towards the north or towards the south is uh, imminent depending on the strength of the high pressure cell that's why we have this uh, cone of uh, uncertainty this is the cone of uncertainty so just take note of that so under that cone of uncertainty everyone must be prepared for the possible effects of this uh, tropical uh, cyclone which is expected to become a 215 kph uh, uh, near super typhoon because super typhoon uh, the joint typhoon warning center is 240 kph pagasa is 185 so likely under pagasa this might become a super typhoon so expect wind signals up to five near the core of the system or where the core is expected to pass areas of the uh, partido district tamarilis norte coastal areas and uh, katanuanes might be uh, within the uh, damaging winds of 100 to 130 kph so uh, just monitor the track of the system particularly uh, the pagasa track and uh, other agencies that uh, uh, tracks this uh, system and uh, our track is only supplemental just take note of that and if we uh, take a look now on the uh, latest uh, uh, multi track from different agencies monitoring this uh, powerful system it looks like every one of them except for the uh, Japan Meteorological Agency you can see here on the northern uh, part of this uh, uh, group of tracks it looks like uh, it's uh, moving towards Isabella but the rest is uh, expected to track over northern Aurora or over Kasiguran so that's roughly 200 uh, kilometers northeast of Naga and the Bicol region the rest of Luzon will be affected by the rain bands of this system, so please take all necessary precautions to those living in low-lying areas, flood-prone areas, because there will, there will be a threat of flooding, and it is estimated that the rainfall of this system may, may reach 400 millimeters on the core of the system. On the outer rain bands is up to 50 to 200 millimeters, so it's quite a large system that could bring more rainfall. Here's the latest... Uh, 
Mm. Let me move this first, okay? So here's the latest. Now here's the latest uh, model clocks from various uh, computer models, including the latest one, the AI trackers. Uh, let me move this, okay? That includes uh, Google DeepMind and the Google GenCast, and it shows here that the system is uh, really moving south of the pack, okay? Including the Joint Typhoon Warning Center. Our track is also similar here, somewhere here in the middle. And uh, these are the uh, different players. The uh, European model is somewhere here. So we will wait and see for the next uh, 24 to 48 hours if this clock will change. Let's hope that it will clock on a uh, recovery. Let's hope that it will clock on a recovery scenario like this this is what we are uh, playing so that uh, won't affect any parts of the uh, country but we don't know it depends on the strength of the high pressure so we will monitor that uh, powerful system the uh, intensity or the uh, lowest uh, pressure among the bunch is uh, this one from the uh, google DeepMind. It shows here less than 920 MB. So that's a uh, category 4 or 5 super typhoon. So let's hope that it won't happen. Okay. So pardon my uh, talking. I'm currently uh, using a new set of uh, um, highlighter here. Uh, and uh, here's the Google DeepMind update. And we are going to show you to here that it's likely to reach four or five, but hopefully it's just three or two. And uh, here's the strength. Most of them are category four or five, reaching uh, super typhoon status. So uh, if we take a look at the weather nerds uh, latest one as of the 2 p.m. yesterday, the track is still the same, passing uh, more or less 200 kilometers northeast of Bicol region on Sunday. What else? Here's the latest from the MIT Dr. Emmanuel uh, website, showing you for the next 48 to 72 hours before making landfall of Aurora. The uh, forecast um, wind models are showing that the system might reach a high of uh, 205 or 220 kilometers per hour. That's uh, still a uh, major typhoon, not yet a super typhoon under JTWC, but Pagasa might become a typhoon because their threshold of a super typhoon is at 185 kph. Okay, they downgraded it from 220 way back in 2015, and in 2020s, they decrease the threshold to 185 because of the destructive nature of these 185 kph typhoons that's why there's a possibility that uh, it might be upgraded to super typhoon if the winds of 10 minute average of Pagasa reaches 185 okay so based on the uh, wind model it looks like uh, it's only at 205 to 220 uh, sustained winds based on the uh, one minute average of JTWC and uh, so far the chips ensemble is uh, amazingly low at 110 to uh, 130 kph because most of the time they are up there maybe because they saw something well, we will wait and see on what will happen on the intensity of the system the multimodal diagnostic comparison from RAMBB shows here uh, the intensity also reaching um, some at uh, super typhoon strength minimal. So we will uh, observe that. Here's the uh, deep shear layer, uh, deep layer shear, and it looks like uh, 
until November uh, 7 uh, this uh, actually this is the uh, latest one but it's going to become and uh, by looking at this it looks like on November 8 and 9 Saturday and Sunday we will be having an increased wind shear so most likely it could affect the circulation of Feng Wong. Let's hope and pray that it will not intensify. It will uh, weaken further. And we will observe this system moving forward. And uh, what else? The rain accumulation, 24 hours. So we will fast forward this uh, Saturday evening. Because Saturday evening we will be experiencing or even in the afternoon of Saturday will be experiencing already the on and off rainfall from the rain bands of this large cyclone. And then on Sunday, uh, Naga City and the Bicol region might be uh, experiencing rainfall of 50 up to uh, 75 or 77 millimeters here in the graph of the ECMWF. There are areas here in Bardido that may reach more than 100 millimeters of rainfall. But since... Uh, uh, sometimes the uh, forecast of ECMWF is underestimated uh, because of the Now, we all know that sometimes the uh, rain model of these uh, computer models are somewhat uh, underestimated or overestimated. So, we are going to uh, estimate this rainfall of a big region somewhere between 50 to 200 millimeters because of the close flyby of this system to the north of our region. Okay, the worst is 400 millimeters, but I don't think so unless we are being uh, hit directly by the core of the system because this part of the uh, uh, path of the storm, this purple one, is very high. You can see that? It's uh, more than the 200. There are areas here up to 300 millimeters, almost 400. So folks over northern the sun must pay attention because if we move this slider into Sunday afternoon and Monday uh, morning until Monday afternoon, we expect rainfall to occur over much of northern and central Luzon. Central Luzon is only around 50 to 100 millimeters, but up north, uh, including the Cordillera administrative region, Benguet, Baguio, might be seeing rainfall amounts of 300 to 400 millimeters, as you can see it here. Okay? So that's the scenario of the rain accumulation of the system. So Fox the whole, over the whole of Luzon, including Metro Manila, might be experiencing 50 to 100 to up to 200 millimeters of rainfall. And also here over Mindoro. So please take all necessary precautions. Over the Bicol region by Monday, we'll be seeing already improving uh, weather conditions because the storm or the typhoon has already made landfall over northern Luzon. Okay, so there you go. That's the latest for this uh, early morning of uh, Friday, November 7. And we will see you again tomorrow for another update. From Typhoon 2000, this is Mike Padua. Stay safe always. Be hashtag weatherwiser. Let's all pray that the storm will move up, not making landfall. And thank you so much for watching our channel. God bless to all.